Hi, I'm Andy. I'm Keith. And we're both instructors at the National Driving Centre. Today we're going to talk about the show me, tell me question sheet. Okay. I'm going to be the examiner and Keith here is going to be the student. Keith, doesn't feel right. Let's get into character. Ah, that's better. Let's do this. Okay, so we're going to do our show me tell me's for our category C. These become a, a beginning of your test before you go out on the drive and before you do your reverse. Now remember, if you like the video, just hit that subscribe button. Okay, so what we're going to do first, we're going to ask some questions regarding the outside of the vehicle. Okay, so the first question, Keith, is show me how you would check the cargo doors on the vehicle, please. Cargo doors. Okay, I'll make sure all my cargo doors are nice and secure. They're not going to come open. I'll also walk down the back and check them ones as well. I'll just make sure they're nice and secure. They can't go open as I'm driving down the road. OK, Keith, so now what we need to do is check the rear tyre for me, please. Check the condition and tell me what we're looking for. OK, well, the condition of the rear tyre, I'll be checking to make sure it's at least one millimetre across three quarters of tyre, 75% all the way around the tyre. There's two tyres, so I'll do the inside one as well. I'll also make sure there's nothing in between. I'll check around the outside for any bulges, any cuts or any wire cords and I can visually look to make sure it's inflated. If I wasn't sure, I could use a tyre pressure gauge. Great. Okay, so way down there, can you tell me the, uh, what we check for on the wheel nuts, please? I'll uh, make sure the wheel nuts are butted up against the wheel, showing no clean metal or rust. If it's got wheel nut indicators, I'll make sure they're all lined up. And I could give them all a tap to make sure they all sound the same. If one sounded hollow or tinny, it could indicate it was loose. Great. Okay, so moving on from that, I now want to check the spray suppression system, please. So if you could just use that rear wheel again and check the spray suppression system. Yeah. I'll make, my, make sure my spray suppression is nice and clean, it's nice and secure, covers the full width of the tyre and not in contact with the tyre at any point. Great, so moving on from that one now, I want to check the suspension. Can you tell me what we'd be looking for with the suspension of the vehicle, please? Okay, I could be looking, I could be looking through our, our springs, make sure they are smiling and they're not as frowning. I could also stand at the front of the vehicle and make sure it's not leaning to one side. Brilliant. Okay, so now what we're going to move on to is the condition of the bodywork. Okay, it's really important that our vehicle is in good roadworthy condition here. Okay, so Keith, can you tell us please what we've checked for when we're looking at the condition of the bodywork as part of your daily routine? Okay, the bodywork, I'll be checking the underrun panels, uh, bars, just to make sure they're nice and secure, showing no side projects. I could also check the bodywork by looking along the chassis, make sure the bolts are nice and secure from the chassis to the box of the lorry. Okay, so moving on from that, can you explain what we look for now? Well, we want to check that our cab is locked into position. Okay, when I start the vehicle up, I'll make sure the cab locking the illuminating light goes out again. And I could also make walk around to make sure the locking pins are secure. Great, okay, so now we want to look at our visual aspect. Okay, so now what we're going to move on to is checking the condition of the mirrors. Okay, so Keith, can you show us and explain what we check for when we're looking at our mirrors, please? Yeah. I can check my mirrors. I'll do this both sides. I would make sure they're nice and secure. Check the face of my mirror, making sure there's no cracks. It's nice and clean and gives me good visibility as I drive down the road. I'll do this for both sides, my proximity mirror and my curbside mirror as well. Great. Okay, so thinking more on our visual aids now. Keith, can we check the condition of the windscreen, please? Yeah, I can check my windscreen just to make sure it's nice and clean. There's no cracks. It gives me good visibility when I'm driving down the road. There's no mascots in the windscreen, in my view, anything like that. Okay, great. Now the windscreen wipers as well. Check my windscreen wipers. Just make sure there's showing no tears, no splits on the inside, tears or splits. I can even go inside and work the windscreen to make sure they clear nice and clean. Okay, great. So now what we're going to move on to are our levels. Okay, so that's oil, coolant and screen wash. You'll normally get asked one, maybe two of these, but for the purposes of this video, we're going to do all three. So, so Keith, can you check your oil, coolant and screen wash and explain when we will check our oil, please? Okay, so I'll open the bonnet up. Uh, my screen wash is down here. I would take the cap off and just fill it up to the top so it overflows. 
This is my coolant. I'd make sure it's in between the minimum and the maximum. When I'm checking the oil, I do this when the vehicle's cold on a level ground. I pull my dipstick out, wipe it, place it back in again, and make sure it's in between the minimum and the maximum. Okay, so now what we're going to move on to is something really important for you guys, okay, when driving these vehicles, and that's securing um, lo and loading the vehicle. Okay, so Keith, can you explain the safety factors involved when loading these vehicles, please? Yeah, when loading the vehicle, I would start from the bulkhead, heavier stuff at the bottom, lighter stuff on top, make sure they're nice and secure, evenly across the axles, weight distribution, and I can check this against my Vosa plate. Okay, great, brilliant. Okay, so what we're going to move on to now are the checks that we need to make when inside the vehicle. So the, the checks from the cab, okay? Okay, I'll get inside the vehicle, use my three points of contact. Okay, so moving inside the cab now. Keith, can you explain what checks you'd make before and after starting the vehicle, please? Okay, before starting the vehicle, I'd make sure the handbrake was on, it was in neutral. I'd turn my ignition on to one, make sure my lights come on and go out again. Great, okay, so moving on from that. Okay, what we want to do now is check our windscreen washers and wipers work. So if you can demonstrate. Okay, so remember that's really important. We need to make sure the windows are kept clear whilst we're out on the road. Okay, so now what we want to do, um, you'll get asked to check audible devices. Okay, for the purpose of this, we're going to use the horn. Okay, so Keith, can you check that the horn's working, yeah. please? <laughs> Great, brilliant. And now, again, we want to make sure that the uh, windscreen can uh, demist, especially in the winter months. So can you set your windscreen to demist, please? Yeah, just turn this to demist and then turn my heater on. Okay, great. Now, two more questions you'll get asked that are really important, okay, and every driver should know about the, the uh, information for their vehicle, okay? So that'd be the height and the speed limit. Okay, so key. Can you show us where the height is and where the speed limit information is, please? Yeah, the vehicle height is just above me here. It's 12.2 um, foot, and our vehicle speed limiter is written down here, which is 56 mile an hour. I could test that on a dual carriageway or a motorway. Great. Okay, Keith, so moving on from that, okay, what we're gonna do now is make sure that our power steering's working. Can you show and explain how we would check our power steering, please? Yeah, I would uh, make sure the handbrake's on, make sure it's in neutral. Before starting the vehicle, I'd put a little bit of pressure on the steering wheel and then I'd start the vehicle to make sure the steering goes nice and loose and make sure it doesn't feel notchy. I could also drive down the road nice and slowly, just turning my wheel to make sure it's nice and firm. Okay, so from a legal point of view now, we're going to move on to the taco. Okay, there's only a couple of things we need to know about the taco. So Keith, can you explain what we'd look for on our taco, please? Yeah. I'd make sure my taco's got enough paper in it. Um, also make sure that it's got a sticker that's visible in the cab to show that it's been serviced and calibrated every two and six years. Okay, so we're going to move on now to a couple of questions about the uh, air system on the vehicle. So Keith, how can we check that we've got the correct air pressure? Okay, I can just turn my ignition on and just check to make sure I've got enough pressure. Okay, brilliant. So moving on from that, how can we then check for air leaks on the vehicle? Okay, I can start my vehicle up, build the air up. Once the air's built up, I could just depress the pedal a few times, make sure it goes back down again. Well, now the air pressure's up, I can get outside and listen for any air leaks. I do that while the engine's switched off, so I can hear it. Okay, I'm just going to listen for any air leaks. I can do this down by my wheel to make sure I can't hear any sounds, but also walk around the other side and listen by the air compressor. Okay, so we're going to move on to now our, our lights check. Okay. So you'll be asked to do one or two of these, maybe the fog lights, indicators. It could even be the headlights, okay? But for the purposes of this video, we're gonna do a complete light check. Keith, can you carry out a complete light check on this vehicle, please? But also, while you're there, can you explain when we would use the fog lights? Okay, I'll turn on my lights on. Side lights, headlights, rear fog, main beam, and indicators. I'd use my rear fog light when visibility is less than 100 meters. Okay, I'll check all my lights are working, my indicators are working. I'll indicate at the front, kit beam, main beam, they're all working. I've got my top marker lights, they are working. Just give them all a tap to make sure they're all working and nice and secure. All my marker lights down the side, they're all okay. When I come to the back of the vehicle, I'll check all my lights are working. I've got my top lights, they're working, my marker lights, side lights, indicators, rear fog, they're working. 
Brake lights, I can check them by backing it up to a wall, asking for assistance or placing a weight on the pedal. I'm not going to worry about reverse lights. Okay, so Keith, as we've checked the lights, can we also check the condition of the reflectors, please? Yeah, with the reflectors, all I'm doing, I'm just making sure they're present, they're nice and clean, and they're showing no cracks. I'll do this on both sides. Okay, so that's the show me, tell me questions for the category C vehicle. Okay, we hope you've liked it, and we hope it's been a help. Okay, if you like the video, hit the subscribe button. Okay, also watch our other video on the Cat C Reverse. I've also got a category C CPC as well. Okay, good luck out there.